Hey, what's up my party people? And by party people, I mean you nerds. This video, we are gonna be talking about C++ data types. Now, what the heck is a data type? Well, every piece of data has to be typed to some type inside of C++. And if that makes no sense, we're gonna get into it. But first, I wanted to ask you guys, are you tired of being a complete C++ newbie? Tired of having struggles building C++ applications? Well, I have the solution for you, and that is Embarcadero C++ Builder. These guys sponsored this series, and I am so grateful. Basically, what it is, it's a C++ IDE. It gives you everything you need to start building C++ applications, but gives you the tools to do it right. So, for example, with C++ Builder, you are going to get code completion, awesome debugging, pixel perfect UI design. Part of that is drag and drop components, so that's easy. Database integration to make data-driven applications a piece of cake. And the best part is you can deploy to four different operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. So step up your game, check out C++ Builder. They have a community edition, which is completely free. Go check it out, leave a link for you in the description. Ooh. When we create a variable in C++, we define a type at the beginning. So you've probably seen int x equals five as an example. This here is the data type. In the series, we've also used the double data type, which if you've watched the previous videos, you guys would know that int restricts you to whole numbers, positive, zero, and negative, whereas a double will allow points. So 5.3, 12.1, 0 0.7, negative 12.7. And you can see how the different data types make a difference. Whether or not you see the value in data types is not the question. <laughs> Basically, you're so early on in your learning of C++ that making an argument for or against data types doesn't matter. You just have to deal with the fact that C++ has data types. C++ is what's known as a statically typed programming language. And what that means is that variables, such as X in this case, has a data type when you declare the variable and it's always going to store an integer in this case. This is in contrast to languages such as JavaScript, things that are a little bit more flexible and uh, promiscuous. <laughs> it's probably the, not the right word. But anyways, the, the variables do not have types. C++ they have types, other languages they don't have types. What kind of languages are going to have types? Well, C is gonna have types, C Sharp, Java. Most languages, I would say variables are statically typed, meaning they have a type at the beginning when you're writing the code, and that data type is stuck to that variable at compile time. The benefit of data types is that you always know what's going to be inside of that variable, or at least what kind of data you should expect, so you know how to use this variable appropriately. The downside is that it's restrictive. We can only store integers inside of X. There are other pros and cons, and you guys can argue about which is best in the comment section below if you would like. But what I'm gonna say is that I actually prefer the statically typed. I like to know what type my variables are at compile time. With a dynamically typed language, you might not have to put a data type with your variables, but every language, the data itself still has a type. So in this situation, if we just got rid of this here on the left and just looked at this here, what you might say is a literal value. We just typed in the value here. This has a type. There are all kinds of different data types. We are just most used to seeing them with variables. So we often give variables a data type or functions will have a return type. That is also where we'll come across these data types. So what are some of the other data types besides int and double? Well, I like to categorize things. It helps me learn. So I'm gonna categorize it into integral, char, which you can argue might be part of integral, but just, just follow along, gosh, quit interrupting. And floating point. You also have bool or boolean. You have arrays, you have structs. We also have classes. And you can see there are a lot of data types. There are also things like vectors, pointers, unions, enumerations. There are a ton of data types. <laughs> so what, do you, what, what exactly do you need to focus on is the question. Well, we're gonna start here at the integral data types and we're gonna kind of work our way down in this list. <laughs> so integral basically means integer based. So it's like int, but there is a larger variety than just int. Char is for characters. So letters, numbers, spaces, special characters, those are all part of the char data type. Floating point, this is like double. Double is an example of floating point. Floating point allows us to store fractional numbers. Bool, 
Very simple, it's just true or false. Arrays allow us to store multiple pieces of data of a particular type. So we could have an array of integers. We could have an array of doubles. So we'll get into arrays in this series. Now structs and classes are kind of similar in the way they're created. Basically these allow us to create our custom types. So if we wanted to create a custom data type for like a person or for a brownie or for like type of cleaning supply or a class, like a school class. Oh, there we go. We could have a class to describe a class. Basically what I'm trying to say is that the sky is the limit when it comes to structs and classes. We can make these into anything. There are a lot of structs and classes that are made available to us already in the standard library, as well as any other libraries we might pull in. But throughout the series, we're gonna talk about creating our own so that we can use all of these data types and kind of package them in a system where we can create more complex data types. So hopefully that makes sense and if it doesn't, that's fine because we're gonna get into that later. Before we move on though, I do wanna to touch on one more thing with classes. You've probably heard the term object, like object-oriented programming. And now that we're talking about data types a little bit more, let's go into classes and objects just to touch on that for just a minute. A class is like a blueprint in that it describes a structure. So we might have a class for a student. And then an object is an instance of that class. So a particular student such as Caleb or Sally. Inside of this object, we can use all of these different data types to create all kinds of different things. So we could have the student's grades inside of an array. We could have the student's name inside of a string, which I didn't even, <laughs> totally forgot to put up, up here, but yeah, strings are kind of a big deal. Strings are sequences of characters. <laughs> and we've talked about strings in this series. We'll get into those too. We can actually define functions inside of this class, which would make that function available to all the objects. So we could have an object such as change student's grade or ridicule student in class. Whatever we want it to be, we can put that inside of the class as a blueprint and any objects are gonna be able to use those functions. So think of these as like the building blocks and we're gonna build so much cooler stuff with all these building blocks. These are the Legos. We gotta learn our Lego pieces before we start engineering like cars and stuff, right? So this is your crash course summary of data types. It's very important to understand how they work, especially when it just comes to individual values, literals like this five here. This is going to have a type. And if you don't understand data types, it can come back and bite you because you might be treating a value as if it's a different type than it really is, get different results than you're expecting. And if you don't believe me, just go through an example with me. Something like five divided by two. Very simple math, we all know how to do this. This is obviously two. Anybody knows that? <laughs> well, not really. It's confusing because what's actually happening is that this is an integer and this is an integer, so it does integer division, meaning the result is an integer. So what you might expect is 2.5, but because we're working with integers and not doubles, we get the value two. So if you wanted to get 2.5, you would need to add a 0 0.0 or something in here or do some type casting to basically say, hey, yo, I wanna do double division. And in that case, you're gonna get 2.5. So that's just a very simple example, but the same thing is important as we go into more complex types. Learning data types can kind of be boring and cumbersome, but this is like the foundation, and if you really understand it, it can make programming fun, especially when we get into custom types like classes and structs. Oh, that stuff's fun. So be excited, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys. By the way, we're gonna be talking about integral data types in the next video. It's gonna be another onboard video, so see you then. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.